Planet Venus, a world as mysterious as it is compelling, an Earth-sized planet just next door. The surface of Venus today is hell made real, pressures of almost a kilometre underwater on Earth and temperatures rivalling that of a self-cleaning oven. But it might not always have been so. Atmospheric measurements made by probes in the 1970s and 80s suggest that Venus may once have had much more water than today, perhaps as much as an Earth ocean's worth. If that's the case, what happened? One possibility is that, under a steadily brightening sun, Venus entered a runaway greenhouse effect, with its oceans evaporating and, ultimately, losing all its water. The hydrogen to space, and the oxygen to its global layer of sulfuric acid clouds or to lavas on the surface. However, recent models suggest that major volcanic eruptions, like those that trigger the mass extinction on Earth at the end of the Permian, dumped so much CO2 into the atmosphere that Venus could no longer regulate its temperature, which it might have done via plate tectonics, as Earth does. In which case, Venus's present climate is simply bad luck. The key to understanding Venus's past climate history may lie in its oldest, most enigmatic rocks, the tesserae. Venus's tesserae are highly deformed terrains, with tectonic complexity unlike anywhere else in the solar system, except perhaps ancient continental rocks on Earth. Tesserae occupy about 7% of the planet's surface and are locally the stratigraphically oldest material. In addition to extensional and shortening structures, numerous tessera show evidence for layering, manifest in radar imagery as undulating radar bright lines that differ in strike from tectonic features. In a sketch map of this portion of Tellus tessera in Venus's eastern hemisphere, that radar bright layering is shown in teal. Note how these lines have distinctly different orientations to extensional fractures, shown as thin black lines. And when compared with topography, where warmer colours correspond to relatively higher elevations. These undulating lines seem to be situated on the flanks of locally high terrain, exactly as if layered rock were exposed on the sides of hills and ridges. Indeed, we have found this outcrop pattern in numerous tessera exposures across Venus, indicating that layering is not restricted to Talus tessera. Often and alpha regions, for example, show evidence for layering as well. Complex outcrop patterns in layered rocks are common on Earth, occurring in sediments such as the limestone strata in the Burn, County Clare in Ireland, and in volcanic sequences, like these in eastern Ethiopia, where hydrological activity has eroded the landscape so as to create highly arcuate exposures of otherwise near horizontal rocks. Tesserae also show evidence for having been folded, such as these lenticular features in Talus Tessera which resemble eroded periclinal folds, that is, folds that are doubly plunging, in, for example, the Suleiman Mountains in Pakistan. What's the prospect for erosion on Venus? Hydrological activity in the present is not an option. The planet's searing surface temperatures see to that. But aeolian activity might be the culprit. During the Soviet Venera 13 mission in 1982, Sand-sized particles were seen to move on the lander structure over the course of an hour, with wind the most likely explanation for that movement. So we can envision a scenario for at least some tesserae, whereby originally flat-lying layered rocks are deposited, before being folded, and then acted on by wind, which scoured away the flanks of ridges and hills to expose those once flat layers. But a major question still remains, what kinds of rock make up these layered tesserae? One possibility is that they're sediments of some kind. However, with the exception of ash deposits, there are no depositional environments on the Venus surface today where sandstones, carbonates or deep water sediments, say, could accumulate. If they really are sedimentary then, these layered tesserae date from before the present climate. Alternatively, layered tesserae may be stacks of lavas, akin perhaps to those large outpourings of basalt that comprise the Siberian traps in northern Russia that erupted in the late Permian. If so, 
then parts of Venus's tesserae may resemble large igneous provinces on Earth, like the Deccan Traps in India, where kilometers thick formations of lava flows extend vast distances and attest to periods of volcanic activity and outgassing that must have had a major impact on the planet's climate. Whether sedimentary or igneous, the discovery of widespread layering within Venus's tesserae and the implications for their formation and depositional environment makes these enigmatic rocks a prime exploration target for future missions to the second planet. These rocks may help us unlock the secrets of Venus's climate history and even whether the planet was once like Earth. Imagine setting down there and glimpsing that alien landscape. Imagine what we might discover.